All right, let's jump over to the main slate. Let's start with some some stacks, some quarterbacks, and some stacks builds stack builds that you like for the main slate. Uh, so I'm I'm going with Geno Smith and DK Metcalf uh, for my first stack. You know the the Saints used a ton of man coverage um, in week one. I'll have to see how it was uh, last night, but DK tends to get a boost when facing man coverage. And like I said, I, I'm really high on Geno Smith this week, so I think uh, DK's uh, probably his best stacking partner. Um, and then my next one is Isaiah Pacheco and the Chiefs defense. Um, there's some nice correlation there where the Chiefs tend to lean on the run game a bit more um, if, if they have a big lead with Pacheco. So this is certainly a spot where that could happen. Uh, Bears, you know, are a great matchup for running backs. And it's a good matchup for a defense, too, because Justin Fields tends to take a ton of sacks. He's been pretty careless with the football. And the Chiefs defenses look really good, uh, especially after getting Chris Jones back. Last week, so I love stacking Pacheco with the Chiefs defense here, um, and then have to stack the Chargers Vikings game in some way. And I think my favorite one is Justin Herbert, Mike Williams, and send it back with Jordan Addison. Um, you know, not only could this game will be a shootout, but um, I think everybody's going to be all over Keenan Allen here, and rightfully so. But Mike Williams had a solid game too. You know, he had eight catches for eighty-three yards had a 90% route turn rate, 30% target rate. So he's the kind of guy that could drop, you know, a huge game here with multiple touchdowns. Um, and then Jordan Addison, I, I keep waiting for it to happen. He hasn't done it quite yet, but he should leapfrog KJ Osborne as the number two receiver. He he actually started the game uh, in a two wide formation um, last week. And then he caught that long touchdown. So I think it's only a matter of time, especially since Osborne made a couple of bad plays. I, I think he dropped the ball in the end zone. Um, so this could be another big Jordan Addison week. And hopefully, you know, we see his routes run rate go over 80%. And then then I think he's like in must-play territory at that point. But love stacking this game. And that that one, I think, is sneaky. Yeah, I like Kirk I like that as well, Kirk Cousins. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I like Kirk Cousins' stack here. You know, he's been, again, just, nice. what, 350 yards, per, over 350 yards per game. Uh, so I'll stack him with, you know, Jefferson and any of those other guys. You know, Jefferson Addison, Jefferson – Osborne or Jefferson Hawkinson and, and Osborne, you know, yeah, he looks bad, but, or he look, he had a bad game in, in, in week two, but he still was wide open on a touchdown. Uh, and he's ran a route on 95% of yeah. cousins dropbacks through two weeks. It went up from 94% to 96% last week. So if you saw him in a two wide set, that might've been the only snap that he missed. It was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he might've just baby... been late getting his helmet. He was like, yeah. Oh yeah. Where's, that... my... Where's my helmet? That is true. Uh, baby <laughs> steps here. Baby steps. At least he saw one snap in that formation. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I like, uh, I like all three and Osborne is just the cheapest. Uh, so yeah. I do like including him, whether you're going, you know, Jefferson Osborne or, you know, three of the, three of the four guys, uh, Osborne being the cheapest, um, I do like him in that in that uh, in that stack because even if he drops to the wide receiver three, he still should be on the field, you know, eighty percent of the time, uh, 80 percent. Uh, also, like Russell Wilson here uh, against Miami, a Miami team that I think is going to put up some points. Uh, stacking him with Jerry Judy, who I think you know had a bad game, but the underlying metrics were good. You know, he was on the field every. Uh, you know, not every snap, but uh, 86%. And that is something that, you know, I think could go up a little bit over 90 this week. You know, Sutton's been around 90%. So I think next, uh, I think against Miami, they're going to need Judy uh, and his ability to, to, to win and, and get open. So I like stacking Russ and Judy and, uh, you know, Marvin Mims you could throw him in there as well. He, had, he didn't see that many snaps. So I probably wouldn't, and I, you know, Fangio's probably going to play that, uh, you know, hot quarters or too high shell and limit some of the deep stuff. So I think Judy is the guy uh, that I want to stack Wilson with. And then CJ Stroud, you know, he's been, as you mentioned, kind of the, the Houston offense has been a little faster paced, a little higher volume in the past game. Uh, so I like Stroud and I like all of his uh, wide receivers, you know, that's Jacksonville secondary I don't love the Jacksonville secondary. You know, I know they I guess they kind of held up against the Chiefs last week for for what it's worth. But uh, overall, I, I like stacking him, especially with uh, with Tank Dell, who I think is just going to get better and better. You know, I, a guy who I already you know think might be the best receiver on that team. But Nico's playing well as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so any you know Nico or Tank, you can stack him with. Robert Woods has been you know solid as well. So you could throw him and Schultz in there as well. But I think Tank and Nico are the two. I think I expect you know. 
at the end of the season to be Houston's two leading receivers. So those are the guys that uh, I would I want to stack him with the most. Okay, who do you like for dart throws? Uh, well, I'll just start with the guy you just Chief mentioned. Chief guys, yeah, 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 yeah. C.J. Stroud uh, for fifty three hundred. Uh, pretty much everything you just said. Uh, do like stacking with Nico. Dell and even throwing some Schultz here and there, but um, definitely encouraged by just the pace of the offense and how much they're throwing the ball um, for running backs. I, I do like justice Hill um, at 4,800 because Gus Edwards ended up having the bigger game. Thanks to a goal line score, but he'll have the edge on him in terms of just underlying usage. You know, he had a bit more of the early down work, obviously dominated the passing down work and actually saw more snaps around the goal line. So uh, th- this could be another situation where he'll, he'll score two touchdowns week one it was Edwards this week. It could be Hill next week. So I just think Hill could be under the radar this week at 4,800 with people maybe fleeing on him uh, a bit too soon. Um, and then wide receiver. I, I love some of these cheaper guys. Uh, Josh Reynolds at 4,200. I, I don't know why his price is 4,200. This reminds me of T Higgins two years ago and uh, Zay Jones last year. It's like a glitch in their Excel sheet where it's like, if error equal forty two hundred dollars or something like that, but he's clearly the, <laughs> yeah. they're 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 he's the number two receiver on the lines right now. He is worth way more than forty two hundred. Same with Rashid Shahid, who again is forty two hundred. There's something wrong with their Excel spreadsheet pricing these guys at forty two hundred. But Shahid picked up where he left off his rookie year. Looks even better this year. He's had back to back games of over sixty yards to start the season. So he just has way too much upside especially in tournaments to be 4,200. I'm guessing his roster ship will be pretty high. Um, and then Jaden Reed, also another guy in that 4k range. He's 3,800. Even if Christian Watson returns, like I think he's going to still command targets and be kind of under the radar as a sub 4k guy. Um, and then at tight end, got to stick with our boy Chig at 3,200 bounce back with, you know, with a solid four catch 35 yard game. Um, after the goose egg in week one and his, his routes run rate dipped to 66%. But heading into the season, I think we would have been fine if he's averaging around 70% routes run rate. He, he saw his target rate jump up to 21%. So he still has a ton of upside um, and has yet to happen yet. But I want to be on him before that happens as opposed to chasing points after he has his big game. So I like him again this week at 3,200. Yeah, you know, still waiting for uh, for Jake to to blow up, but it's got to come sooner than later. Yeah. Uh, for me, Jerome Ford, he's forty eight hundred, so you know, don't forget about him at a yeah. running back. Uh, again, tough matchup, but I expect him to be the feature back. Uh, Rosh- Rosh- Roshan Johnson for the Bears, um, you know, he is the passing down back, and now they're deactivating Foreman, so it's really you know Herbert and Roshan Johnson and. You saw Johnson have the big week one, kind of quieted down last week, but you know he's still, you know, mixing in on those passing downs and getting getting some carries as well. So in a game where they're big underdogs to the Chiefs, I think we, you know, we could see more Roshan than Herbert this week. Uh, and then another interesting one, uh, it looks like David Montgomery is going to be out for the Lions, and uh, obviously Jameer Gibbs is going to get a, a lot of love, but I think Craig Reynolds is interesting because we always see the Lions kind of use at least two if not three uh, backs in the rotation. So if Montgomery's out, uh, you know, Reynolds has an outside shot of getting 10 touches in this game you know, or double digit touches. You know, we've seen that in the past with guys like Justin Jackson kind of pop up in, in, mm. in and all of a sudden they're involved in the backfield. So if Montgomery's out, Craig Reynolds at near, near min price, I think is, is pretty interesting against the Falcons as a home favorite. Uh, already mentioned KJ Osborne. I think he's a, uh, He's an interesting play in what should be a high-scoring game. Tank Dell uh, at 3,600 on uh, DK. Love him. Had averaging five catches for over 50 yards a game. Uh, Jonathan Mingo continued to play every snap. Uh, you know, he Chark didn't take his role at all. It was Marshall who was uh, bumped down. So another guy who I think is just going to get better as the season progresses, Jonathan Mingo. He's still close to mid-price, 3,400 on DraftKings. So, uh, you know, he ran around on 97% of the dropbacks in that Monday night game. So, you know, the, the production hasn't been, hasn't really been there. Caught three balls for 26 yards, and, but he got eight <laughs> targets in that yep. in that game. So, you know, it's, it's coming. Uh, he got one of the, one of his catches was right near the, uh, right near the goal line too. So uh, like Mingo and then a tight end, Zach Ertz, you know, 3,500. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, he's in my top 10 for tight ends. He's been, 
playing just like he used to back in the day, just 90, 85% of the, uh, of the routes. And uh, he's catching a lot of balls. And this is a game against Dallas where it's going to be tough to throw against Diggs and Gilmore on the outside. So I think Ertz has, has another big game. Yeah. I love the um, Craig Reynolds call because I, I don't know if the line, just because David Montgomery, if he misses time, I don't know if they're just going to give Gibbs a mm-hmm. bigger role. I think they're, they're limiting him for a reason. And I would not be shocked if Reynolds does inherit much of the Montgomery role. I, I don't think enough people are aware of that. And yeah. in the past, like he's always produced whenever he's been called on, you know, to get five to 10 touches, he's produced. So yeah, I, I do think he's a sneaky play, especially in GPPs. Yeah. I mean, there's a non-zero chance that <laughs> Reynolds could lead the team in carries if, uh, if Montgomery's out. Oh like, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I would, they, I, it might be better than 50, 50. Yeah, it might be. Uh, they also called up Bam Knight. Uh, I don't know what they think of uh, him, but he's uh, he's there too. He might get a carrier too. We'll see. But uh, yeah, yeah, we'll see it what they uh, what they do. But uh, that's definitely a situation to monitor. Yep. All right, let's uh, let's go to our lineups. All right, so you got first pick on DraftKings. Where are you going? Uh, I am going with uh, Jerome Ford at forty eight hundred. I think he's a clear <laughs> value play this week. Sam Laporta, a tight end at 4K. Uh, I'll go Josh Reynolds at (laughs) 4,200. Countering my Lions, okay. That's got to be a spreadsheet error that two guys are priced like that. Yeah, I don't know. (laughs) I mean, it's, I guess, yeah. Uh, Because remember, it was like T. Higgins was stuck on, I think it was like 5,300 or something. Every week, uh, it's like the. They uh they mainly overrid it. There was some formula, and they just forgot to update it. Like that was my theory, anyway. I will go with the Buffalo Bills at twenty nine hundred at Washington. Yep. Commanders, yep, it's a good pick. Uh, yeah, I think you took the Cowboys last week before I had updated like the Jets having Aaron Rodgers on the <laughs> on the spread. That's why my projection for them wasn't as high. Um, damn it, uh, I'm gonna go with Keenan Allen then at seventy six hundred. I'll go Zay Fires at 5,400. I'll go Gino at uh, 5,700. Let's go with um, Bijan at 7,800. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll, I'll just take my defense here to get out of the way. Uh, I, I will go – I'll go with the Patriots up against uh, Zach Wilson. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking of one of those two defenses in that game. <laughs> Uh, but the Bills at under three K against this commander is pretty. Cool yeah, too. no, that's they're they're definitely the best value for sure. You 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 have Keenan Allen, right? Yeah, yeah. All, right, all right, I'll go uh, Mike Williams. Six nice. K. Yeah, he's too cheap too. Damn. Um, I will go. Um, I'm gonna go with another cheaper running back. Oh, I'll I'll go uh, Isaiah Pacheco at 5400. Yeah, I think that's a great spot for him. Yeah, positive game script. His usage yeah. t- ticked up again last week. All right, QB. Give me some Kirk. 6,900. Nice. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll do it. Tank Dell, 3,600. There, take that. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, I was definitely thinking about it. Figured that was coming up. So Oof. I need to save some. There we go. Now I have 7,600 for tight end and flex. I go Zach Moss, fifty five hundred. Nice. Played every snap, so he is a road underdog. But if he's going to play passing downs too, then yeah, yep, yep, yep. So I, I got to spend up at tight end. Ah, uh, I, I don't think he's the best value uh, necessarily, but I do like blocking your Kirk Cousins a little <laughs> bit. So I'll, I'll go with TJ Hawkinson at sixty five hundred again. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if he's a great cash game play, but. I, I, I kind of force myself to have to spend up at tight end. So let's, let's go with him. Let's go with some Ken Walker at a uh, 6,200 mm-hmm. averaging three and a half targets per game. So it's yep. better than I thought <laughs> he would be. So I'll go with him in my flex and I have 5,300 left for a wide receiver. Nice. So I have 8,700 left for my flex. Um, can't really afford, you know, Justin Jefferson or Tyree kill. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna spend up at running back. I'm I'm gonna take Tony Pollard at 8K. Uh, he's my RB two this week. I think this is just an absolute blow up spot for him against the Cardinals. So yeah, let's uh, take Tony Pollard. I have 700 left on the table. Didn't mean to do that, but I'll, I'll take <laughs> it. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I have 5300 for wide receiver. I'm going Michael Thomas here. 
Uh, he had seven catches on nine targets in week two, five catches on eight targets in week one. So he's, he's getting back yeah. uh, and still 5,300. I think that's too cheap. Yeah. I think I have him as a top 25 receiver this week. So yeah. Uh, all right. Who uh, recap your lineup? So let's see. I went with uh, Geno Smith at quarterback. Uh, my running backs, I went the cheaper route. I went Jerome Ford and Isaiah Pacheco. Um, wide receivers, uh, I went Josh Reynolds, Keenan Allen, and Tank Dell. Uh, I spent up at tight end with TJ Hawkinson trying to block your Kirk Cousins play a little bit there. Flex, um, I went with Tony Pollard and defense. I took the Patriots up against Zach Wilson and the Jets. All right. I got Kirk Cousins at quarterback, 6,900. Running backs, uh, B. John Robinson, 7,800. Zach Moss, 5,500. Walker in the flex at uh, 6,200. Wide receivers, Mike Williams at 6K, Zay Flowers at 5,400, and Michael Thomas at 5,300. Tight end, Sam Laporte at 4K. And then I got the Bills at 2,900 at the Commanders. All right, switch to FanDuel. I'll go Jets at 3,900 for defense. The defenses are priced up. So make oh, sure I yeah, get that. look at that. <laughs> <laughs> um, damn. Well, I- I'm going to go with Michael Thomas. Um, okay. I had flight. He, he's like cheaper on yeah, Fandle. No, he's, he's like the same price as like, uh, we're talking Robert Woods, Curtis Samuel types on Fandle. I, he is a better DraftKings play, but he's still just a great play on Fandle too. Yeah, no, that's nuts. Um, all right. I like it. I like it. Uh, I'll go with Zach Ertz at 5,100. Nice. Oh man, um, I'll I'll double down on Jerome Ford as well. Uh, Fifty six hundred on Fanduel. Uh, I'll go back to Cousins seventy eight hundred. <laughs> it's just too cheap. Yeah, yeah. That's the only game with a total over fifty, right? And like way over. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah. yeah last week had like eight games with a total below forty. Just nuts. Um, let's go with uh, Calvin Ridley at seventy five hundred. Sixty. Ah, man, I'm just gonna get my defense out of the way. Um, I'll go with the uh, Browns at home against Tannehill, who bounced back last week, but still, like, you can be careless with the ball sometimes. And that Browns defensive Browns line, D, is, yeah, yeah, pretty good. So let's go with them. But yeah, you're not kidding. You gotta spend up at defense. It's it's tight on Fanduel. Uh, I'll go Keenan Allen here. 8,800. Uh, and it, this is, uh, this is probably a bit risky, but, uh, I'm going to go with Amon Ra St. Brown. Uh, again, <laughs> if he misses the game, I get a zero. I can't like sub him out. So I'm taking a bit of a risk here. Last week I took the gamble, uh, taking AJ Dillon, assuming Aaron Jones would be out. Yeah. That's what happened. But then Dillon sucks. So yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm over one on my gambles. Hopefully this one comes through for me, but he should play. I haven't heard any reports that. Amara is going to miss time or anything, but he is dealing with the toe injury. I'll go with Amari Cooper at 6,200. Mm. Price a little too cheap. Thought he was going to be out. Uh, and then he ended up yeah. playing and having a great, great game. And it looks had... fine to me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I- I'm going to go with a tight end here. I'm going to go with Chig here. Quanquo. He's 4,800. Yeah. I think he is. He's a better fan to play too. Like he might not catch five plus balls, but he could do a ton of damage with, you know, three or four receptions. So, um, like him being priced down on FanDuel at 4800 I'll go uh, Roshan Johnson at 4700 Nice. How much money do you have per player left? I have 8600 per player. Oh, okay. Running back and a flex. All right. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend up at quarterback. Um, I'm going to go with Justin Herbert at 8400 right. I have 7,800 per player remaining. I have a running back and flex left. All right. So for my flex, I'm going to go Justin Jefferson, 9,700. Let's <laughs> get that stack with the yeah. Cousins. Damn. Um, uh, I'm going to go with Tyree Kill in my flex. Nice. There's a chance Waddle might miss this week. So, yeah. I mean, it's scary to think how many targets Tyreek would see if that's the case, but yeah. All right. For running back. 
We got 7,500s. Top one is Brian Robinson. Gibbs. I'm going to go Gibbs here. 7K. Uh, we'll see. I think Montgomery's going to miss, so I think he could have his heaviest workload. He had nine targets and seven carries last week, so mm-hmm. uh, I think he can get 15, 20 touches in this game. So we'll go Gibbs. Uh, what do you, who do you got to finish out? So I have, what, 6,100 left. Um, I'm going to double down. I'm going to take Pacheco again, and I, I do think he is a better play on uh, yeah. FanDuel. But again, love the potential game script and the matchup against the Bears. So I'm, I'm all in on Pacheco this week. All right. What does he want to look like? Uh, so I got Justin Herbert at quarterback uh, for my running backs. I went Jerome Ford and Isaiah Pacheco. My wide receivers, I went with Michael Thomas, Calvin Ridley, and Amon Ross St. Brown. Um, I took Chega Quanquo at tight end for my flex. I spent up and took Tyreek Hill. And then my defense is the Cleveland Browns versus the Titans this week. All right. I got Cousins at, at quarterback at 7,800. Running backs, uh, Jameer Gibbs at 7K and Roshan Johnson at 4,700. Wide receivers, Keenan Allen, 8,800. Uh, Zay Flowers, 6,300. Amari Cooper, 6,200. Tight end is Zach Ertz at 5,100. Uh, the flex, Justin Jefferson, 9,700. And then the Jets defense at home against the Patriots at 3,900. All right, that is going to do it for us here at the Fantasy Flex. Again, for our player projections episode, be sure to check out that on the Action Network podcast channel. And every Friday, we'll be back with the uh, the night shift where we break down the Sunday night, Monday night football DFS slates right here on this channel. ActionNetwork.com for all of our NFL fantasy and betting content. FantasyLabs.com for our DFS tools and models. You can find Sean on X at the underscore odds maker and me at Chris Raybon. We're at those same handles on the free award-winning action network app. Until next time, let's get this money. 